Okay, before I start this video, here's an important update. We're installing the metal drive toggle clevis, and this is what the original part looked like here and the one you'll see in the video. However, this part has been redesigned and replaced. Now the new version looks very similar to the original. It'll have these two legs facing the back of the recliner when you install it. However, the shape or the profile is different. Now I don't have a new one to show you, but I believe that the new version has a flat spot on one side of the legs, and that flat spot should be on the top side or facing up. If you get it on the wrong way, the chair won't have full range of motion. And that's what happened to me when I first installed the newer version. So if you get it wrong, like I did, you'll have to disassemble, slide this part off, flip it over, and slide it back on to get everything to work properly. All right, let's start the video. All right, before we start putting new parts on, we need to add some grease. You can see the manufacturer used some here. We're going to grease this bearing, this one, and this one that I removed from the side of the arm frame. I use a bicycle grease, but a lithium grease will work as well. And this just allows them to rotate more smoothly and easily. So let's put that back in. Okay. While you have some of the parts removed from the chair like this, it's always a good time to check your hardware on your rocker springs. The screws on the top and the bottom of each spring, make sure they're good and tight. And these two bolts here. So we're finally ready to install some new parts. So locate the two longer bearings that came in your kit. We're going to install these with the collars on the inside and the bearing facing out in both directions, like that. And these also get grease. So let's go ahead and lube them up and install them. And again, put, place them from the inside out like that. Next up we're going to feed this rod back through this first bearing and now we want to place two of the medium bearings on each side of the new part between the two spacing links. So before we do that we have to determine our orientation so let's look at our rod here And okay, this is the bottom side. This is the side that I want facing up. And when I install this part, I'm going to install it with the legs pointing to the back of the chair and this cut facing upwards or this little indentation here. So this is the orientation we want. If you don't get it right the first time, you're going to have to take everything apart. <laughs> so yeah, I've done that before. So now we add two bearings to each side of that part and you're going to have to spread them apart and work with them a little bit and beware if your rod spins. So there's the orientation I want. Let's go in a little bit more. Okay, let's feed the rod a little bit. I'll feed the rod a bit more. And one more. Back it up a little bit here. All right, let's line these up. Now when this cross support doesn't stay on to the bearing like that, I normally try to put a little bend in them.
So trying to put a small bend in this support while it's on the chair did not work. So the next step is to take it off and put it in a vise to bend it. And I couldn't get a, uh, a bit here on the screw head or the bolt head. So I've got some vise grips on it so I can use a half inch open end wrench. Oh, let's make that 7 16 So there's our lock nut. And here's our support. We'll put it in the vise to get a slight bend in this. So now we've got a slight bend in our support. It's ready to reinstall. And our 7 16 inch wrench. All right. So now we have our support back on. You can see with the slight bend, it's back onto this bearing or this spacer in a better position. You don't want it on the edge where it's, it can easily come off. So that's a much better position. So let's continue to feed our drive rod through the parts. And when you get to this point, sometimes you have to bump the, uh, you have to plug it in and bump the back actuator to get this end to line up with the rod, but that went in good. Okay, once we're at this point, we want to swing this rear swing around so it's pointing forward again. And then we want to install these parts on the opposite side the same way. So after that part comes our washer. Now fitting this last rear swing in is often tricky because there's very little space to work, but let's give it a try. Need to pull it back a little. There we go. So we continue to feed it through. All right, now let's put the spring back on. Now we need to finish up by getting the drive rod into the opening at the other side there. And this can be very tricky. So take your time and be patient. I usually put a light down there. It's difficult to see. And you just have to try to line it up and you may have to reposition this footrest, or excuse me, back actuator to help you. Now let's see which way we need to go here. Come on to the rod a little further. Got lucky. <laughs> Next we need to line up the holes for our bolts that hold the parts in place along the drive rod. So I use a scratch all for that. Just to kind of line things up. And get our bolts started here. Do the same on the other side. Once you have those started, you can use a power tool if you want to speed things up a little bit. You're just going to put these on finger tight. You're not going to snug these down yet. We want to put everything together and test operation. And the last thing we'll do, once we know everything is good, we'll tighten these and we'll tighten the spacing link if they're loose. So now we want to put our leg rest swing bushings back in place. So I'm going to move this rod again. So 
So as I said earlier, you want to use new bushings. And if you have the dark screws, if that's what came on your chair, you can reuse those. The black leg rest subassemblies go inside the rear swings. You put the bushing through the opening in the rear swing. Line it up with the foot rest slot. You can start these by hand. There are no threads in these plastic bushings when they're new, so you're actually cutting threads when you put the screw in. So you need to kind of hold things together while that's happening so it doesn't pop apart. And you can finish up with a ratchet. an awkward position with the camera here. Once the head seats, just give it a little quarter of a turn or so and you're good. And again, once the head makes contact, go ahead and put a ratchet on it and just give it about a quarter turn or less. Snug it up. Okay, so we're ready to make the final connections here in the middle and then test the chair. First, we're going to reinstall the drive toggle connector. Now, you may notice this one has a bent spire on it. And I have a new one on order, so when it comes in, I'm going to simply swap this one out and install a new one. But for testing purposes, this one will work. When you install this part, you want to make sure that these little tabs are pointing up to get this in the proper position. So I'm going to install that first. You can see that these parts line up and fit together so that the end of this actuator arm will fit right here and the pin will join everything together. But on the old setup, we had this plastic part as well. So that's why they say this new part replaces two plastic parts, the one that was broken on the drive rod, and there's no longer need for this one either. So let's line them up. So and I should mention, use the replacement pin they provide in the kit. It may be a harder steel than what you had on your chair originally. All right, so let's line these up. I'm going to bump the actuator a little bit here. Now let's see if that'll work. There we are. We attach our clip. And now we're ready to test operation. That's foot rest only. Here's back and foot rest at the same time. After testing operation, it's time to tighten the two lock nuts here along the drive rod. But I noticed something was wrong. I put the bolts in in the wrong direction. The lock nuts should be on this side. So mistakes do happen, especially when you're trying to record a video and do the repair at the same time. So I'm going to see if I can get these switched around before I finish up. And I'll have to take this drive toggle connector loose again. Take the lock nuts off. They were just hand tight. I'll save a little time here and use a power tool. Alright, so we got that one in its proper position. Now we can put the washers and lock nuts on.
And this does need to be super tight. Just snug the lock nuts down. That's good enough. Okay, and don't forget, if either or both of your spacing links are loose, be sure to tighten the fasteners that attach them to the front rail in the front. You'll have to take a couple staples loose to get under the fabric, but it's pretty easy access. All right, let's put it back together again. Put the drive toggle connector back in. And by the way, look for cords that may be in a bad position as well. I don't like this setup here. Yeah, let's move that over there. All right, let's try it again. Okay, looks good. So I finished up the mechanism repairs. Now I'm getting ready to reattach this outside arm panel, but before I do, there's some bolts that are inside this arm frame that attach the frame to the rest of the chair. So I'm going to check and make sure those bolts are good and tight. All right, let's wrap things up. Now we always want to do a final test when we reinstall the back. And in this case, we have those two electrical connections to make as well. Then we're going to test the chair, make sure everything's working properly. So if you want to attempt this repair on your chair and you want to order the drive toggle clevis kit, you can order that through the manufacturer, Lazy Boy, or one of their dealers.